y'all guess what we're going to be making today <laughs> this is going to be a, a tutorial on how to make this cute little toddler apron using dish towels and a pot holder and some coordinating fabric so stay tuned we're going to make a a little child's apron out of some pot holders some dish towels and some coordinating fabric today and now let's get started i actually purchased these dish towels and these pot holders from the dollar tree um i wanted to do valentine's day and they had valentine tea towels but they didn't have a single pot holder that matched them so i went with the coffee dish towel and the chef um pot holder and that'll work for the video and actually this um this dish towel is um you know on each side it has the the design and it's they're facing each other so they'd be upside down on one side and i'm i'm gonna cut that and make that into the the both pieces into one apron so that'll work you know but if you don't have to do it that way um you it's not necessary if you buy one that doesn't have that i didn't even notice that when i bought it so anyway and i also had a coordinating fabric and i figured since there was a lot of red in this that this red would go well with it and you'll need a um an iron some kind of ruler and i like to use my quilting ruler along with my metal ruler and some chalk or some fabric marker and some scissors and some spritz spray to spritz the fabric when you iron it so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to cut the um, neckties and the waist ties for the apron okay so the first piece i'm going to cut and i just this is a, a really scrappy piece of fabric um so you know i'm there's i'm just trying to find a straight edge to cut on sometimes when i have a small piece of fabric i'm making a small project i'll grab the fabric and um just cut so anyway we need to press this and then we're going to do some measuring to the center of the waistband so what i want to do is this is actually the straight edge of the selvage edge of the fabric and since this is broadcloth it's got a really neat edge on it no jagged edges or anything and what I want to do is measure four and a half inches now let's do four we just need four I think and I'm going to put the the edge where the f number four is right along the edge of this hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing I'm going to do four inches wide by about nine inches across which this is going to be for probably about a two or three year old so. but basically this is the piece in the middle that will go across the waist and then i'll do the the strings to tie the waist so i'm lining this up at the edge of the fabric here And that's actually five crap we want to do four play as fuck up okay and i want it to be four inches by about i'm gonna do ten and this is eight and a half so i'm just gonna mark that there so that i know and it's okay, I like to use chalk because I can just take a damp rag, rag and dab it off when I'm done with my project. And then we want to do another inch and a half to make that. Ten inches. Okay, so that's going to be the middle waistband. And now what I want to do is cut this out and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do four inches wide by 12 to, no, I'm going to do 14 inches. Let's do 14 inches for the ties. So I'm going to show you this on camera. This is the waistband. I'm going to cut it. Okay, 
So you see here, this is going to be the waist straps, and I did those 4 by 18 and this is the middle band for the waist, and that is 4 by 10 And then I have the neck straps, which are 4 by 16 and I went ahead and cut those four because actually they were going to be the waist straps but I felt they were slightly too short so I'm going to use the 18 inch for the waist straps. Now the next thing we need to do if you purchased a dish towel like I did that is kind of topsy-turvy you know it's upside down on each side you really don't want to make that out of an apron and it's also a little too narrow so what I'm gonna do is first and at this point you could take off that tag when we don't need that on there it's gonna be in the way so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna fold this towel in half so that these are Dollar Tree towels and they're a little off so you know you can't expect perfection because if you do you're going to be sorely disappointed and I'm just going to hold the ends pinch those together and see it's going to be a little off but it's not going to matter once it's sewn so then what I want to do is just take my scissors and just cut right through that and then see I have two pieces that are facing the same way and I'm actually going to sew this together because I want to make it the whole apron so it's nice and gathered and it looks really cute. I think the more gathered the more roughly it looks the, the cuter it is. This would be for a girl obviously. You can make one for a little boy and you could make less gathered and it would you know be still be good for a little boy. So anyway let's take it to the sewing machine and get some sewing done. So I've got all of my materials here to make this one little apron. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to get this. Uh, what I do with it? Let's see. That's the shorter one. So I'm going to set these neck straps aside for the moment. And I'm going to take the waist piece and these two strap pieces that I'm going to um, make for the waist ties yeah I can't think and what I'm going to do is sew each one of the waist ties one end of it to each end of the center waist piece and then I'll show you what to do next so I've, I've threaded my machine up with coordinating fabric and I'll show you this on the machine because I had somebody the other day said that they like to see all the little sewing bits now I have my machine set on 2.5 stitch length, it's just, it's my favorite setting, even though when I have it on light fabric it automatically goes to 2.0, but I find that that's a little too tight for thin, really thin fabrics like broadcloth, so I set it on 2.5, I've got it on medium stitch length, um, the tension is set between the 6 and the 5, I'm using red cotton thread, um, the foot pedal is set to the presser foot is set between the four and the five and what I'm going to do is go ahead and take a piece of this um, one of the ties the uh, waist tie and the middle waist piece and I'm going to set them with right sides facing together and I'm sewing on the wrong side of the fabric and um, like I say, I usually do about a half inch um, seam allowance. So there's always a little bit hanging over here on the side of the presser foot. I just, um, that works for me. And since we're going to be pressing these seams open, you want a little bit, um, a pretty good width of a seam allowance so that it folds over, presses open nice and neat. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. You can see that I have the ties sewn to the middle waistband. So now what we want to do is press these seams open. So that now, 
what we want to do, and I, I know that it is super hard for you guys to see everything in the frame, but uh, what I want to do is on each side, this side, this side, all the way down these ties and the waistband, I want to fold over and press about a little less than a half an inch, and I'm going to do that all the way down each side. Now I've got each side pressed down and I also meant to add that we need to press the ends because these are going to be the ties so we don't want any raw edges. Okay. And the next thing we want to do is lay these over where they meet exactly in the middle and we're going to go ahead and press that down. Okay, so there we have it. That's our waistband and our ties connected together. The next thing we want to do is take these neck pieces or the neck ties whatever you want to call them I'm just going to take one end with the wrong sides facing together and press this down and we're going to go ahead and do this on both ends because there's nothing to cover this raw edge that's going to be on the back of this so we want to make sure that we do both of those and then what I'll do is lay it with right sides this, I'm going to lay each one of them with the right sides facing together and I'm going to sew a seam down the side and then turn it and this is going to be the neckties and I'm going to do this with each one of these. So you see I have each one of those sewn down the side and now what I'm going to do is just turn them and then press them and get them ready to attach to the top of the apron. can't think. <laughs> These are pretty easy to turn because they are about an inch and a half wide, so you're just going to put them on the dowel like that and turn them right side out. Same thing with the other one. just takes a few seconds to do this. If you make a smaller, a more narrow tie, it's obviously going to take a little bit of maneuvering to get those turned. Now I'm going to lay that seam flat in the back in the middle and we just press them now you want to close up one end of these that's going to be the open end of the tie that's not connected to the bodice part of the apron I'm just fixing this I pressed it. pressed up crease into it okay so I can lay all of this stuff aside, the ties and the, the waistband and all that. And what we're going to do with this part is since this towel has a finished edge all around it, there's not a lot that I need to do there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to lay these two pieces on top of each other. And I'm going to top stitch two lines and all around. I'm going to top stitch the bottom and two lines to hold this together instead of sewing a seam in it and opening it up because that would be kind of bulky. Okay, so here we are. We're going to start on one side of this. And I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... change my machine settings. I'm going to change my stitch length to 3.0. I'm going to change it to medium fabric and I'm going to keep it on a medium speed and I'm going to make sure you can most of the time with these thin pins like this you can pass right over it with a straight stitch as long as you make sure that the head is out of the way and you want to make sure you're hitting that fabric in the back. I didn't want to sew this on the back because I want it to look as neat and straight on the front as I can so I'm going to have to be very careful that I've got it. It's kind of touching this line right here. So I know I'm, I'm good right there. And 
you guys and gals see that? So that finished edge is pretty neat and it all stayed on that the two pieces and kept it together so now what I need to do is I need to use my gathering foot and make a gather all down this. You can do this um, by hand and I may end up having to do that. I haven't done this on a terry cloth like this before so we're just going to see if it'll gather okay. If it doesn't then I'll make a hand stitch and just gather it up and put it in the waistband. So while I have this um, red thread in my machine here what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the ends, the ties that go on the back. I'm not going to sew into the waistband. I'm going to skip over that. And that's one reason for making it a separate piece of fabric. It kind of gives you a, a starting point and a finishing point. So I'm going to start right over the edge of that seam that right there where, where the waist will be. And I'm going to sew down this open edge and close it up. And I have my machine set on light fabric, 2.5 stitch length, and medium speed. And I am going to do a little back stitch. And then I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing with the other tie, starting on the other side of the um, seam. Okay, so you see I've on my straps down the sides and on the ends but I've left this waistband open and that's so that you can get the the skirt piece for the apron in there. I hand gather this. I'm not going to use the gathering foot. I know I said I would but I feel like it's not going to work out on this terry cloth and the last thing I need with all the bad luck I've had over the last couple of months doing videos is to get frustrated with this. So that should be a pretty easy step to do. I'm just going to gather it. It's a fairly small area to have to gather. What I'm doing here is I've got um, threading up a hand sewing needle. And I'm going to knot it really good at the end so that it doesn't pass through the fabric. And you can start on the, the back or the front, but you're going to do the top edge and... To make these gathers, what you want to do is you just want to pass that needle through and do about half an inch apart. And you want to do it about a third of an inch from the top. You don't want it too far down the fabric. So now you can see that I've stitched all the way through the top of this. Now we kind of, I, I kind of like doing the, the hand stitching because you have some control over the fabric more than you would if you machine stitch it. So I'm going to, what happened is I realized my knot was coming through the fabric. I'm going to make sure I knot it up really good because I don't want it to come through and ruin the whole thing right in the middle of it. So now what we need to do is get the top of our waistband, or get our waistband, it's not the top of it, and we're going to, I'm going to feed this into here and pin it as I go along because I don't want it to go anywhere. I'm going to take both ends first and pin them on each end of the waistband. I can take this part and put it inside that waistband and kind of even everything out. Cute the way it is, but I said we were going to do that whole apron using the pot holder, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that too. But you could sew this waistband on at this point, and then you would have a half apron, which is really adorable. So all along the edge of this waistband right here, and it is a little bit thick because it's that, you know, towel material. And I'm still not cutting that needle, but I've lost it. Did I cut it by accident? 
No, there it is. We're going to go ahead and cut that off. Once you've got it pinned in and you're comfortable with it, you can cut the little needle off there. I think we're going to change some things up on our machine. I'm going to do a heavy duty fabric just because it's so thick in this waistband of this thing, this apron thing. Um, and I'm changing my stitch length is 3.0. I'm going to have it on medium speed and I'm going to line up my the edge of my presser foot with the edge of that waistband right there. I don't want to go too close to the edge because it may not match up in the back and then you'll have a time getting everything straightened out. So. The next thing we're going to do is figure out where we're going to attach this pot holder and it kind of fits just about evenly with this um, um, waist here so we can kind of match that up and I'm going to cut this little handle off a little loop to hang it since it's decorative right there and it's got the little um, chef on it what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it on the front of the apron and uh, yeah I can do a little bit of pinning on the front and we still have the neck ties to attach so don't freak out I'm like how are you going to attach it I haven't gotten there yet slow down ladies and gentlemen okay and I'm keeping my red thread in because I just kind of like that that works And I'm going to keep my fabric on heavy and my stitch length on 3.0 and the speed is on medium. I'm going to do a back stitch. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is attach our... We've almost got it. We want to attach our um, neck straps. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to figure out where I want them in the back, and then I'm going to come around to the front and pin it just to hold it in place till I get the next one on, and when I start sewing, I'll have to remove the pin. Okay, so I've got that one, and you want the raw edge, if you did it the way I did, to be on the inside, facing the inside. You don't want it to show. And the end that you sewed closed is obviously going to be the ends of the tie. You don't want those there. So you see, I'm kind of looking. Does this line up? Yeah, that kind of lines up. So we want to flip it back over and pin it. And you want enough of it down in the um, the body part of the pot holder because it's it's really thick around the edge here where that um bias tape is sewn on and you don't want to try to sew over it because it's just going to be a mess if you do okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold it down with my finger and i'm going to remove that pin and then i'm going to put the presser foot down and i'm just going to make a little box So that's the first one, if you can see. We did a little box shape there. Now we're going to do the same thing with the second one. Alright, so there you have it. That is our little toddler apron from Dish Towels and a Pot Holder. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial and I finally did it. Yay! Peace y'all. Bye-bye.